Hey folks, Alex with Bay Cities Construction here. Hey, I've got a new update for you on our ADU project in Torrance, California. We've got some time-lapse footage. We've got some really cool uh, shots of our team putting this building together. If you want to learn about how to build a 900 square foot ADU, watch this video. So starting at the ground floor, you can see that the guys have put up the first floor walls. These walls are huge. They're two by eight walls. Standard wall heights for a two-story building are two by six walls. But because we had to re-engineer the foundation, the stem walls, you notice the concrete stem walls, they're really thick. They're eight inches thick. So we would have had to fur it out and do all sorts of kind of crazy stuff to be able to hide those stem walls. So what I decided to do is just use a, a larger dimension stud wall. So we ended up doing a two by eight and we uh, did a pressure treated three by eight, which is that brown wood that's at on top of the concrete. Going with a larger dimension wall helps in a few different ways. It helps us be able to install the infrastructure and there's a bigger void in the wall for plumbing and electrical. And it also is a stronger structure. So it increases the stiffness and it also increased the earthquake performance of the building. So we're really stoked about that. We've never built a wall with that dimension lumber and it really looks strong. Everybody that's come in here to work on the place is tripping out how strong that first floor framing is. Now for the second floor, we did a two by four uh, framing because that's all you really needed. There's no heavy loads above the walls on the second floor. So we totally just stayed with a traditional dimension lumber for that. So let's kind of recap from the ground floor. You can see the guys not only putting the walls together, but also fitting it, making sure that the walls are plumb and, and square. You'll see us kind of slamming the top plate to make sure that all the nails are driven home and that everything is, is sitting like, like they want it to. It's really important to make sure that the, the building is square and uh, it could be a little tricky. We, we weren't able to assemble the walls on the floor. We basically assembled them vertical stick by vertical stick. It was a little bit slower, but because of the way that the building is set up, it would have the walls would have been too heavy. We, we don't have the ability to put a crane in the backyard to raise the walls later. So we chose to assemble the, the walls this way. In the next shot here, you're gonna see us put the floor sheathing on the second floor. So the first floor ceiling joists are in, the perimeter walls are obviously in, all of the openings for the windows the, are in, and then we're ready to, to start assembling the second floor walls. Second floor walls, same thing. Once you, you put them up, you gotta check them with the level and make sure they're all plumb and straight and make whatever adjustments are necessary prior to pulling the ceiling on. If you don't plumb the walls and straighten the walls before the ceiling goes on, you'll never be able to do it because the ceiling locks everything in. So you'll see the guys doing that. And then on this next shot, you actually see the hardware that was installed. The hurricane straps tie the ceiling rafters to the top plate. And then you, those little clips that you see tying the rim board to the top plate on the second floor, that basically helps keep the roof on the structure. It protects the building against lateral force. That's the A35 clips, those little horizontal clips. And then the vertical clips, those are earthquake straps. That protects the building against uplift caused by wind. It doesn't have a, a whole lot of effect for shear, but definitely helps with wind. So, you know, obviously we used uh, the expertise of an engineer and uh, they designed the parameters for all of these connections. And that's what you guys are doing in this section of the video. So now that the roof framing is in, all we need to do is install the sheathing. And uh, once the sheathing is in, then we can install the roof and we can install the stucco paper. And when we get to the point that the roof is in and the stucco paper and, and stucco wires, that's basically weathering it in. The windows have been installed for quite some time. So once we get the roof in and, and wrap the uh, exterior walls, she'll be weatherproof and we can start putting in the drywall. In the next video, you're gonna see the shingles going in and the, the masons putting in the stucco wire, paper and wire. And uh, man, it's, it's, it's real easy from here on out. Once the roof is in and the stucco wrap is, is done, you can clearly see that major milestones have been completed. We're gonna be focusing on the inside so that we can start putting in drywall and get this project done. 
Hey, I really want to thank you for watching our videos. I hope you get a lot out of it. If you have any comments, any questions, please post them in the comments below. And uh, again, if you have any questions about uh, getting an ADU at your place, you know, if you're wondering what it's going to cost or what the process is, we've got some videos for that too. You can also call our offices at 888-881-7355. My name is Alex Rodriguez, reminding you, you don't need a contractor. You need a team of pros. Base of these construction. Thank you.